Hello everyone. The question I want to pose today is, do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? There's a book I'm reading right now by Johannes Baptist Metz. He, he writes about poverty of spirit. It's a red book, a little red book. And he talks about, starts his book by talking about love of self. And why does he start that way? Well, he talks initially about the fact that we are free beings. We have the freedom to choose who we are. Um, so becoming a human being is more than just conception and birth. Uh, it's a mandate. It's a mission. And it's a decision and a command, he writes. And we have an open-ended relationship to ourselves. So we have the freedom, unlike other animals, to decide to become more of ourselves, more human, or less of who we are. A dog will be a dog no matter what. And it will act like a dog, and that's who the dog is. But we have the decision to become human, to be who we are meant to be. Um, and so he says that from the very start, we are something that can be, a being who must win selfhood and decide what it is meant to be. And so the process of becoming human unfolds in a, a process of, of service and obedience. And this is a really key phrase he uses. He says that the free process of becoming a human being unfolds as a process of service. In biblical terms, it is obedience and faithfulness to the humanity entrusted to us. Our humanity is entrusted to us. It's not something that we create. It's not something that we define for ourselves, but it's we're created by God. And so we can go astray. We can decide to use our freedom wrongly and to rebel against the humanity entrusted to us. We can make our own purposes, our own destiny, our own plans and our own self images apart from God and his plan for us. And so um, he writes that lovingly accepting the truth of our being is what he calls love of self. So true love of self is um, really integral to the Christian life, integral to the human life, because Jesus hangs his double commandment of love of God and neighbor. He says, and love your neighbor as yourself. So if I don't love myself, then how, how can I love God and neighbor? Um, and so he writes, understood correctly, our love for ourselves, our yes to ourself, may be regarded as the categorical imperative of the Christian faith. You shall lovingly accept the humanity entrusted to you. You shall be obedient to your destiny. You shall not continually try to escape it. You shall be true to yourself. You shall embrace yourself. So who can we look to as an example? Pretty simple. Mary is always going to be a good example. Mary, um, in the Annunciation, this is where she, she exemplifies true love of self uh, in, in God's plan. Angel Gabriel appears to her and says, um, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And Mary responds by saying, how can this be since I have no husband? She could have said, hey, I already had plans to, you know, get married to Joseph and we we're going to have our own biological children. So thanks, God. But, you know, I don't really feel like this whole, you know, uh, conceiving the, the incarnate Lord. I don't really feel like that's my what I think is what I want or what, what I think is was truly me. Um, and so, you know, thanks, but no thanks. No, she accepts the humanity entrusted to her and God's plan for that humanity. She responds in this beautiful line, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to your word. So Mary accepts the plan of God for her life. And she uh, realizes that she finds her, her life's purpose in obediently accepting the humanity, humanity entrusted to her by God. And then she accepts the calling to serve God the rest of her life. So accepting the humanity entrusted to her, obedience and service are the purpose of her life. And she knows it and she finds that. And she knows that she loves herself enough to accept God's plan for her because she knows that he knows better because he created her. He knows everything and he knows that he has a beautiful plan for her life. So what does this mean for you and I? God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. You may feel confused about what others think about you or say about you or what, your cult, what the culture says that you should be or do. Um, and God says to you, just as he said to Mary, let me show you who you are. I love you. 
You are who I say you are and not who others say who you are. You were made in love. You were made for love. And your purpose is in life is what I call you to because I know what's best for you. So the question, even more accurately put, do you love yourself to let God's plan and his identity, his view of your identity, to become the reality of your life? Do you love yourself to let God define your life and to accept that? Or do you want to create yourself and your own plans? The decision's yours.